This will be my recap and impressions video for the solo session I did for the Ivan Mike 1968 channel. For Ivan, his solo session in our 4GM experiment with All for One Regime Diabolique by Triple Ace Games it was a lot of fun. It had a specific purpose. All of the solo sessions that I've done have had a specific purpose, but I've been so busy lately it's been difficult to sit down to do this video and it was easier to finish off the last two videos on combat and combat options and role-playing games so I kind of snuck some observations in there but this is my recap and impressions video so starting off with the recap this is a solo session for Philippe who is our most well-trained swordsman in our group of musketeers so you might expect that there would be a lot of sword play or uh, a lot of situations along those lines, a lot of combat and acrobatics and chases and escapes and, and, uh, and that sort of thing. People challenging him to duels. Or he might go the other way and think, oh, well, you know, you should put him in a situation where he can't do anything, or he'll fish out of water story. And I didn't really like that dichotomy when I thought about it. I didn't like the assumption that we would put a combat character in a combat situation. I didn't like the assumption that we would automatically put them into a situation that they couldn't handle. And there are references to that at the, at the beginning of the clip about common you know, GMing wisdom. So I decided to do both. I would do them both together at the same time, like a sandwich per se and put this fish in their element and yet not at their element at the same time. And I would work hard to appeal to the player and to the character at the same time. Uh, only you can be the judge if I was successful doing that or not. But the events were really very simple. It was a one-shot. I figured we had about two hours to play and at any moment there could be a dog explosion. So with that in mind, I wanted to start at the Renoir Academy. During the previous session, which Ivan had run, it had been stated that Philippe had been spending most of his time at the Renoir Academy training new students. So that's where we began. And for fun, I put his solo session during the exact same period of time as the session he ran, hoping that we could have some kind of interplay and collaboration between me as the game master and him as the player where we narrowly miss and avoid the other musketeers as we're running around and thanks to his you know very sharp mind and attentiveness that really went very very smoothly and because uh, we were both very familiar with the timeline we were able to have a lot of fun you know arriving just before or just after or in between visits by the other characters and uh, so that's kind of a, an in-joke for us to enjoy, another one of those layers in the session that I was trying to go for. Now, if we had bumped into the other characters, that would have been a serious problem. We've already seen that session. We know that it didn't happen. So how could it be happening now? So one of the things I like most about game mastering is how it is, in many ways, a leap of faith. You don't really know sometimes what's going to come out of your mouth or how a die roll is going to turn out, but you, you hope that it turns out in, an, in a way that's interesting for everybody there. And when you have people that you can trust to work with you and improvise with you and you know, build on the same understandings as, as you are to head toward some kind of goal that might only just be intuited, it's awesome. And that was a lot of fun for me uh, to, to be able to work with Ivan in that way. So we start out at the Renoir Academy, and Philippe is asked for a favor. The Renoir Academy is not of great standing at this point in time in French history. Other schools have you know, more noble or higher-ranked uh, clientele and uh, better reputation. The Renoir School is not there yet, and he would love to have more musketeers training there and be able to build on that reputation. So for him to ask, for Claude Renoir to ask Philippe for a favor, it means this favor is really serious. And, you know, Ivan catches on to this. 
And he takes it very seriously. And what he's asked to do is train this young person who's obviously there, uh, maybe because of a serious problem. And as events uh, play out, it's revealed that the young man is in disguise, the young man is younger than he seems, the young man doesn't have permission to be out, he's not used to cities, he has really, he's quite naive in terms of how common people live and, and what they might what they might think, and so, you know, peril ensues. Philippe does his duty. He establishes for the young man what training will entail and what the end goal is. Lays himself on the line, demonstrates what his skill really is, and impresses the boy. And so the boy asks him for a favor. Could you please take me home? I'm afraid. The boy has revealed that someone is committing acts of revenge against his family, and his father has implied or stated, or maybe he's just dreaming it up, a teenager's fancy, that he must kill a man. You know? And so he's at the Renoir Academy to at least be able to defend himself, but to acquit himself honorably should it happen that this person come and face him looking for revenge or come seeking his father, and maybe he would be able to stand between the villain and his father and, and save the day. The dreams and fears of a teenager. So, Philippe is quite taken with this young man, it's quite obvious, and, and Ivan plays him beautifully of coming to realization after realization about how young the boy is, or sometimes it has to be pointed out to him that the boy is in disguise, or, or what kind of emotional uh, stirring might be below the surface of the boy's uh, relatively calm face. But as the day wears on, they start to develop a bond. The, the role play was the real focus. I mean, how do you pitch a session between combatives and intrigue? Combat being the strength of the character and intrigue being its weakness. How do you pitch a session in between those two things? Well, for me, that was the relationship between the cause of the intrigue and the cause of the violence or the combat. And so... Philippe had to present his ability to handle combat both in his element and outside of his element with planning and with surprise. So, once that's established and I have the sense that Ivan has a good feeling for what I'm going for, he's been able to figure it out by the, the way that I've, I've laid out the beginning, we go for it. They move through the streets of Paris and they, they visit some of the places that we visited in our session, narrowly missing the other musketeers and having a little bit of fun, a little bit of implied threat. They see a cardinal's guard, the one who implied that musketeers were not fit to shine his boots, but yet who is soundly beaten by Philippe. He shows up and, you know, the, the two lock eyes, but the cardinal's guard leaves them alone. But what does that mean for the rest of the day? You know, are they going to be chased down? or Are obstacles going to be put in their way? Who knows? And they are later beset by ruffians, and the boy freezes. And Philippe has to protect him, but he can't use most of the techniques or tactics of his school. He's trapped. He has to put himself between the villains and the boy. He takes a wound, he tries to hide it, and he defeats the villains. And discovers that these, these ruffians, these bad men, claim, and maybe that's the truth, that they were just there to rob Philippe because he's wearing such expensive items that they could feed their families for a considerable length of time if they were to, you know, to roll them in this alley. Philippe doesn't explain it to him, <laughs> takes him home, and agrees to pick him up the next day. He goes and connects. He has his wounds tended. He, he visits uh, Brisecourt, Alphonse's uh, lackey, Eugene, to ask for help uh, tailoring up his, his uniform, which now has been slashed open, and talks about the young man and gains some insight into his you know, emotional state. And so prepared, he goes back the next day, early, 
to help the boy train. And he thinks he witnesses something mystical, as if the boy were able to pass through the solid bricks of the guarding wall around the manor house, or perhaps just appear in open air. He doesn't say anything about it, keeps, keeps it secret. He waits for the right moment to ask about it. The boy has once again snuck out of the house using this apparently mystical means, and the player has learned that the, the cousin with whom the boy is staying is named Emil, and Emil was an NPC introduced by Ivan in his session. Is this the same Emil? We don't know. So now we've engaged the player's awareness of possible entanglements, but the character is still completely oblivious. The character never heard the name Emil before and has no reason to suspect that there's an NPC out there with that name. So now we're having fun on multiple levels, I hope, as the Game Master, and we return to the Renoir Academy, and training continues tougher, and Philippe is able to deduce purely by virtue of Ivan's growing experience and familiarity with the system. So Ivan, through his character, is able to deduce the previous training style that this young boy, using the name Pierre, has used. He's able to figure out, based on the way I'm role-playing him, that he studied in the, the position of iron, this, this fencing stance that that believes that you should not give ground and fight from this, this position of strength. And he remembers who the headmaster of that academy is, and he's able to put that into, into the dialogue and bring it all to life. And I love this. I love it when players care enough about a game to actually read it, to actually get into the, the player material and, and learn about locations if the players are given a map and learn a little bit about the history and the dates and you know common reputations of, of people that are described as background material. That's a lot of fun. It's rarely necessary in a role-playing game to go to that level of effort, but is that really a level of effort? Sadly, it seems that it is, unless you come preloaded with expert knowledge of an IP like Star Wars or something, it seems like the only person who ever knows what's going on in a game is the Game Master. Not so this time, or maybe because all the players are also running the game that this is true. Anyway, Ivan impressed me with his, his recognition of this from just giveaway, throwaway details I was using to describe the boys' fencing. Very cool. So now he has an insight into how to help the boy get over that. But most of the time spent through the, the middle of the run is dealing with the boy's fears, his concerns, the awareness that, that there's lying going on because he's disguising who he is, and the fear of the boy freezing again. What if they're beset upon by more brigands? Or what if this revenge story is really true and someone comes hunting for the boy? What, what will happen? After another successful day of training, again he's going to escort the boy home. And this time they're set upon by a group of cardinal's guards. And these guards already seem to be looking for them. They're, they definitely know the real identity of Pierre. And they recognize uh, Philippe. And they move in, and they're very threatening. It's like, no one's going to miss one musketeer, more or less. They're willing to go to swordplay in order to wrest Pierre from the protection of Philippe and take him to the Cardinal. But why would they do that? Questions are swirling around. None of these questions need ever be answered. Philippe is not an intrigue character, but maybe the player will enjoy the fact that he was in the situation and handled himself with the style and panache that Philippe has been growing into. So there's a brief exchange of blows. The, the boy is able to overcome his fear and engage as a partner in the combat. And then swashbuckling magic happens. And Philippe opens up an opportunity for them to escape down an alley. And we have this long chase uh, through and over and around and under obstacles, ultimately ending up with Philippe upending a hay cart and sending a horse careening down the alleyway. 
uh, behind him to, to crash into and distract the Cardinal's guards, and then, by the clever application of <laughs> recently inquired stealthy behavior, uh, he and Pierre are able to hide and lose their pursuers, getting the boy back home safely. What befalls him after that is outside the scope of that session. And that was it. That is the entirety of that game session, which ran around two hours long. And Ivan was awesome from start to finish and uh, was able to to bring those special qualities of, of being slightly naive or, or at least inexperienced, his thrill-seeking nature and uh, you know his established character traits. They are all present and... A lot of willingness to actively role play, even though it's a you know kind of a weird situation, role playing into a camera. So we see the hesitation of Philippe. We see the the momentary pauses as he's he recognizes that there's something going on here that's not obvious to him, and then having to accept the fact that he doesn't understand what's going on here and soldier through it in his way, applying his particular tools to the problem he's been given. And uh, we feel, and yet don't feel, I feel, the absence of the other characters. We, we feel Philippe's dependence on them, or, or his reliance on them, in the sense that he wishes they could be there. He talks about them a lot, like they're really friends, which was very nice. But... There's never a moment where Philippe is unable to deal with the problems that he's facing. Even though he's a fish out of water, he's very much able to turn the tables and make the situation his own. And I really enjoyed seeing Ivan be able to do that again and again and again, no matter what came his way. So, the commentary has been interspersed throughout the recap, but for me this was a fun session. Each one of the solo sessions as I may have mentioned before, has had some kind of purpose. Um, I've wanted to explore something about All for One. So in the Jean-Marie uh, solo session, I wanted to look at the gritty life of the Monster Hunter and, and really look at the combat side of the equation, but bring in all the elements of that, the horror, the supernatural, and the swashbuckling, to bring that together, the whole tagline in one episode. That's what I wanted to show. Right? You like swashbuckling, you like combative adventures, you like heroic heroes, then then be one. Show me. That was kind of the, uh, the core to that. Let's see that in a session. Then with Breeze Coor, we have this, this face, this charming elegant uh, man, but what I noticed most about him is that he's always spinning tales, he's telling stories, he's exaggerating, he's, he's putting himself in situations, he's manipulating to get what he wants, but what if we were to put him in a situation where because of his rising fame, the way everybody knows who he is, and his, his, his just his perfect embodiment of the ideal musketeer character, what would happen to him in a social situation? And how does he deal with consequences? I had these two questions. What is it like to see him as a shark amongst sharks? And what is he like when the consequences of his activities come home to roost? I wanted to see those things. And I think Ivan was able to see that in his session, and he, he brought more of that out. Uh, in the session we did with him. But that's what I wanted to explore in, in that solo session. So for this solo session, like I said, I wanted to see Philippe simultaneously inside and outside of his element. And uh, to bring out, or to bring him into sharper focus than Ivan will play him when the other characters are present. Like he intentionally steps back. He intentionally plays you know, the, the naive or inexperienced character, the young one, the impetuous one who doesn't wait to, to talk about it or ask questions. So by putting him solely in the spotlight in this solo session, we get to see the man behind the behavior. And uh, 
I think that was well worth doing as a session. I hope, you know, if you've watched it, that you enjoyed it too. And that brings us to the end of this recap. Thanks for watching and being participants in our ongoing, thankfully, experiment as four GMs with one game and one campaign.